This is Bazaar Morning Call. Broadcasting live from the CNBC TV 18 Motilal Oswal Studios in Mumbai. Good morning. You're with us here on a fresh new edition of Bazaar Morning Call. It's a Wednesday morning, middle of the week. We're coming to you live as always from the CNBC TV 18 both of those studios. I'm Prashant. With me, my colleague Sonia and Nigel. Guys, hi. Good morning. Hi. Good morning, Prashant. Good morning, good Nigel. Morning. And uh, amazing, right? I mean, six days of gains for this market. There's yeah. no signs of cooling off at all. And uh, even globally, I mean, things are looking quite good. So let's see how today is stacked up. But lots of queues lined up. Well, that's right. And yesterday in late trade, you had the private banks that have been big underperformers in the last 12 to 18 months come back in style. Mm -hmm. So the Nifty Bank is participating now. Let's see where we go. And HDFC Bank, the big boy, starting yeah. to uh, go up a little bit. We were talking so about falling. that, right, in our editor's Absolutely. roundtable Absolutely. show as to how now perhaps uh, HDFC Bank will start to perform and lo and behold. <laughs> yeah, indeed. And I think the consensus was that HDFC Bank is going to outperform from here when I put out that piece between HDFC Bank and SBI. So let's see how it goes. All right. Well, uh, don't get your hopes too high, guys. No, this is one day, right? <laughs> yeah, so uh, The day. consensus on the editor's roundtable. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Fingers crossed. But, you know, uh, it'll be good because, uh, you know, everyone owns uh, the name. Uh, and that perhaps has been the problem as well because everybody owns it. So you need incremental fresh buying to come in, right? Uh, so I'll just start with exactly that point. So yesterday you had private banks coming alive. The top three gainers on the Nifty were all private bank names. When is the last time we've seen that? ICICI Bank, HDFC Bank, Kotak Bank were the three top gainers on the Nifty. Uh, and, you know, it was, so it did not need help from uh, Reliance or, uh, you know, something else. Uh, it was banks, which is the largest weighted sector in the index. Overnight queues, though, are not all that supportive. Uh, so Friday, the U.S. markets were lower. Monday was a holiday. Yesterday, U.S. came back. Uh, and uh, you basically had the Nasdaq, which ended another 1% lower, and the S&P 500, which was down about 0.6% or so. I think, I mean, the, the worry at the margin uh, seems to be the fact that NVIDIA, which is the uh, sort of high-end chip maker, which, of course, has also been one of the top performers of 2022, 2023, and this year as well. It's also part of the Magnificent Seven, I mean, uh, which is Apple, Tesla, Microsoft, Alphabet, etc. NVIDIA is the leader of that pack. And NVIDIA reports numbers later today. Uh, it's been the leader of the U.S. bull market, not just the tech bull market, but the U.S. bull market, the Nasdaq bull market. And at the margin, I mean, from, the, from what I read, there seems to be a little bit of worry that NVIDIA perhaps could miss expectations, that it could be numbers could be on the weaker side. We don't know. I mean, we'll know later today. But it is very important because, you know, on prior occasions, NVIDIA results have sparked off a massive ra rally in AI and other semiconductor stocks the day, uh, one day later, right? So, uh, you know, we'll see how this goes. But I think there was a little bit of nervousness last night with regards to this. Uh, so I guess people did not want to go in very long. You have the U.S. 10-year, just to, a few other things. The U.S. 10-year, absolutely unchanged at 4.28%. So, but this means that we are still about 15 basis points higher as compared to the Friday before last. Because last week, the yields moved up uh, quite a bit. Dollar index, it came off about a quarter percent. So just uh, at about 104.6 or so is where the dollar index uh, left off. Oil prices have come off. Uh, I think there was a contract expiry as well as far as oil is concerned. So maybe, you know, some uh, impact of that. But 82.3 or so is where, 82.62 this morning is where Brent is now trading at. So not very different, but slightly lower. So where does all of this leave us? As we've been saying for the last several days, the thing to do has been to look up, but to only get in at slightly lower levels. And the market each and every day has given you that opportunity. Even yesterday, the market opened. Uh, you know, uh, rallied, then absolutely flatlined. Uh, and then, of course, in the last 60 minutes, last 30 minutes, actually, the Nifty rallied about 60-odd points or so. The up move, I mean, broadly, if you want to look at what, what are the levels we are talking about here, we left off at 20 to 200. There perhaps is another 300-odd points or so based on Fibonacci extension levels. So 20 to 500, 20 to 530 are those targets that you would look at. Uh, support for the Nifty... The 20 days also moved up as uh, compared to the day before. 21,760 or so is the 20-day moving average. Uh, that's the support uh, that one can sort of keep. Bank Nifty has seen a strong up move, as we said, led by private sex, private banks. The resistance here, it, by the way, crossed the previous swing high, which it was unable to do for a while. The, there's, a, there's a big gap area on the Nifty Bank, which is 47,212. That's the lower end of the uh, sort of gap. And the upper end is 48,002. So this is the resistance area for the Nifty Bank. You get into that zone, 
I mean, I think, uh, you know, perhaps you see a little bit of pullback, a little bit of profit uh, booking. We'll see. Support for the Nifty Bank comes in at 40-day exponential moving average, which is 46,166. And then the 20-day, which comes in at 45,721. The Gift Nifty will come up on your screen and uh, we'll just take a look at what's happening. So not, not, not very much. It's just 30, 35 or points higher. So neither here nor there. The thing to do for the last several days has been to buy that uh, dip which inevitably, invariably appears in the middle of the day, sometimes early in the day. Uh, so that's where we are at. Sonia. We haven't really got a big dip, haven't we? I mean, no, in the last six not. days, it's been a continuous, relentless up move in the market. So there is definitely this little bit of a FOMO feeling once again for a lot of retail investors, I'm sure. Uh, so six days of gains. And if you map the trajectory in the last, uh, say, one month, right, the Nifty has now gained almost 1,000 points in a single month. And this is a month where there was a lot of caution in the system uh, thrown at you. But the Nifty has sort of climbed every wall of worry. And now uh, the stock to watch really is HDFC Bank. It has started to perform. In fact, yesterday was the biggest single-day gain that HDFC Bank saw since December of 2023. It's now up 5% just from the 14th of February low of 1384, which it hit. And yesterday there was 2,700 crores of delivery-based buying in a single day in HDFC Bank. So that is the kind of traction that this stock has seen. I wouldn't be surprised if there is more traction on the upside in the days to come as well. Uh, in fact, overall, DII buying was quite large. There was that, you know, whirlpool block as well. But uh, irrespective of that, 1,500 crores of buying is what we saw from domestic institutions. A couple of things to watch out for. Hindalgo will be in focus. Novellis has filed for an IPO in the US. More on that later, but that will be one of the big stocks to watch today. Hindalco, that is. And apart from that, you have the US FOMC minutes that everyone's watching later today. Uh, there could be further insights on where the central bank stands in terms of rate cuts. So, you know, we'll be watching out for that closely. And uh, in fact, the US markets have also been doing quite well. Uh, yesterday, UBS put out a note. They've hiked their S&P 500 target to 5,400, which is the highest on Wall Street currently. So there are still some bulls despite the rally that we've already seen. But after six days of consecutive gains, looks like we have more under our belt. Uh, the Gift Nifty is now suggesting a start in the green. Well, that's right, Sonia. You know, and yesterday, the two stocks that came back, which have been big underperformers, are the two private sector banks. So, HDFC Bank and Kotak Mahindra Bank. The intraday chart comes up for you on the screen. And there was a big uptick is what we saw on both these two names. Though, if you look at it year to date, uh, you know, or you look at it in the last one year or so, both HDFC Bank and Kotak Mahindra Bank, they have actually been big underperformers in comparison to what the Nifty has done. So are they ready to give up this underperformance? So some of these private sector banks have not really participated. And that chart is telling you the perfect picture out there. Today, in fact, the Nifty Bank again will be in focus because you have the weekly expiry that plays out. So do these private sector banks have enough in them? And remember, they have a larger weightage in the Nifty Bank. Can they continue this up? Well, that's going to be key to track. But in yesterday's trading session on the Nifty Bank, the options data was quite encouraging because we did see a fair bit of writing out there. And the Nifty Bank, it defended the 200 DMA mark, it crossed the 20 DMA mark, and in yesterday's trading session, it conquered the 50 DMA mark as well. But I was telling you about the options data, the 47,000 put, massive open interest build up out there. The premium from the start of trade till the time it wound up, well, it came down from around 600 rupees to around 170 rupees. That's giving you a sense that at lower levels, you know, you like to see support in the near term, that 46,500 odd mark, the 20, the 50 DMA, they're going to be triggers on the downside and support levels as well. But the power of short covering has been visible in this series. We're talking about going up a closer around 800 points approximately. And the way the shots have covered out from the FI angle, that's telling you, you know, in the last many uh, uh, series, whenever you see the FI's net shot, the idea is to come in there and buy, and that's worked out perfectly. Just take a look at that. The nifty up move, well, brilliant. And while the shots, you know, from around 78%, they've come down to around 59%. Tell you that there has been a fair bit of short covering, and yesterday there was a swing factor of closure around 9,000 contracts, because 4,000 long contracts were created by the FIs, and 4,000 short contracts as well were covered out. Moving to, uh, you know, the absolute numbers, 108 lakh, you know, 108,000 short contracts is what the FIs were at the start of the series. That's come down by effectively half. So, you know, so that's the power of short covering that we've seen. Put a give and take everything, the options data. Well, the Nifty support zone has moved up in the near term to around the 21,950 to around the 22,000 mark. I say this because a couple of puts were very active, the 22,100, 22,200 put as well. The stock that I'm focusing on today is Grassum. They're getting very close to that paint launch. So that's one fact. That's one reason that I'm looking at. There was a big buildup in open interest, not only in this contract, that's a February contract. Even in the March contract, there was a big surge in open interest. 
And with this recent outperformance that we've seen, the stock is already up five six percent in uh, you know in uh, in the last few sessions. It's gone ahead and conquered the twenty as well as fifty DMA. So there has been some delivery based buying as well as some long addition. So that's the stock that I'm tracking. All right, thanks a lot, Nigel, for that. Well, let's kickstart the show very quickly. First up, we have some comments coming in from Surendra Goel of City, who says that they have been meeting investors over the past couple of weeks, and interest in India remains very high. A few points that stood out, and these include increased interest among global ex-US funds as India's weightage in those benchmarks have gone up, and second, the EM India investors are going deeper as there were a lot more questions on small and mid caps. According to him, the reasons for favourable biases on India include secular growth outlook, particularly relative to peers, supportive macros, expectations of policy continuity, post-election outcome, financialization of savings. Having said that, investors are struggling with valuation. Okay, let's get you some money market views as well. well on the rupee, Kunal Sodani of Shenan Bank says dollar index and yields are uh, slightly declined as markets await fresh drivers to continue timing the start of the Fed's easing cycle. FOMC's January meeting minutes are due today. The odds for a Fed rate cut in May continue to decline as hopes shift to June. For USD INR, 82.8 to a dollar acts as a support while 83.1 to a dollar is a resistance. All right, and on the bonds, Neeraj Gambhir of Axis Bank says the 10-year benchmark traded in a range of 7.06 to 7.14% during the week. Higher than expected US CPI led to hardening of yields at the start of the week. Duration bonds saw good demand ahead of the last GSEC auction for the fiscal year. However, lower than expected GSEC auction cutoffs led to a rise in yields by a few basis points. He expects the Indian 10-year benchmark to trade in a range of 7 to 7.1% this week. All right, we have a lot of stock-specific action uh, to track for you today. We'll get to that in just a bit. But for the time being, we run you through our special top 10 segment. We're looking at Hindalco, ABB India, Union Bank of India, Whirlpool, Jindal Saw, Jindal Stainless, TFCI. All of them are on our radar on the back of positive news flow, while you have Z Enterprises, Swan Energy, and the Viani International that will be stocks that will be reacting to negative news flow.